because y'all have another uh, station to go to after this. My name is, first of all, let me make sure all of you can hear me. Do you hear me clap two times? Ooh, yes, thank you for the round of applause. Awesome. Okay, um, my name is Lindsay Wiggins. I work for the University of Florida Extension Service in Henry Lakes, Lee in Charlotte County. And this is Lauren. It's so hard for me to call you Butler. This is Lauren Butler. And she works in a county I think all of you are familiar with, such as Okeechobee County. You heard of that? Okay, good. I figured you would have. She's the livestock extension agent there. And we wanted to do this station today because we feel like the cow kids and the kids that are showing steers, heifers, dairy cows, show goats, pigs, all of those food animals, have a responsibility and an opportunity when those animals are being vaccinated, doctored, treated for something, um, castrated, whatever's going on. You are able to do some of that work, um, even though it seems like it's grown-ups that get to do that work for the most, most part. Uh, and so what this is called is Beef Quality Assurance. And there's actually a national uh, program for ranchers and youth and cowboys who handle meat and even the folks that are delivering the live animals um, they can be trained uh, and certified in beef quality assurance and so we we're not going to certify you but we're going to touch on some of those things and some of the things that you can do in the cow pens or with your show animals um, and the reason why it's so important is that America has the safest food supply for a reason it's because we train the people who handle our food and the people who handle our food or those live animals before their food take it very seriously to make sure that they're supplying a wholesome product in the grocery store when you and your mamas go to the grocery store to buy that steak buy that pork chop buy that fried chicken at the mcdonald's you know that it's a wholesome piece of meat right you have no concerns about it uh, making you ill or harming you or your family correct because you knew that the person who took care of it took great pride in making sure that it got to that grocery store. And you can help with that process. I want all of you to repeat after me. Without agriculture, Without agriculture I would be, I would be hungry, hungry and naked. And naked. Oh. That's the end. <laughs> In the first group I said that and then they just kept repeating everything I said. So agriculture is very important to all of us worldwide it is very important that agriculture has great participants on both sides of the grocery store counter so we're going to teach you how to be safe around the animals keep those animals safe so that they can bring a great product to the grocery store and to the mcdonald's and without anything else to say Lauren is going to teach you how to read that medicine label and so you can fill out your post test correctly all right I want to know uh, I know a lot of y'all how many of you guys have show animals at the county fair yeah a lot of you right okay so uh, we have dairy we have some hogs right we have steers we have heifers uh, what else we got chickens ducks Something like that. Goats. Oh, goats. You're already claiming to be a goat farmer over here. Bunnies. Bunnies. Okay, that's right. Oh, no, my page fell down. All right. All right, so when you guys are uh, raising your animals, sometimes they get sick or sometimes they need to have like a, a vaccination, something to prevent them from getting sick. Um, so that's something that you can help with in the pens if you have a, a, a ranch that you're part of or if your animal just needs to be caught to give it some vaccine you can be the one that did takes the medication okay because you can read right all you can read that's right these are just words okay you just got to put them together to tell you what you need to know okay so let's walk through this medication label okay so you have the drug name up here um, and then it has what it's used on the animals that it has so we have beef cattle um, dairy swine and sheep okay what are we missing on there that we kind of we, we just talked about Goats. Goats, okay. Hogs. No, there's swine on here. Horses. Horse. What? Okay, swine's on here. Swine or pigs, okay. What else? Rabbits. rabbits. That's right, okay. So, no, there, you can't use this on poultry. You can't use it on rabbits, horses. Think, okay, so follow the label, okay. It's illegal to go off label unless you have permission from a veterinarian, and even then they should probably do it, okay. All right, so then it has the intramuscular use only. What does that mean, intramuscular? 
Okay, it means in the muscle, okay? So that's telling you what kind of shot it's supposed to be. There's two kinds of shots, intermuscular, and what's the other one? Subcutaneous, okay, which is under the skin, all right? So intermuscular, you're gonna go straight into that muscle, and subcutaneous is right under the skin, which is how we actually do a lot of our uh, medications. Our vaccines are usually right under the skin, okay? And sometimes it takes a little bit of practice to get that shot right, okay? All right, so this one says for intermuscular use only, it has the active ingredients, um, it has what it treats, okay, and then it has the daily dose, all right? So your veterinarian has said, um, you need to treat your animal, um, say it's a heifer, okay? Maybe she's just in the beginning of her project, maybe she's like 600 pounds, okay? So it says the usual dose is two mLs per 100 pounds of body weight, okay? So you're gonna, you're gonna multiply two times whatever pounds she is, all right? So she's 600 pounds, so two times six in this case, all right, so 600 pounds. So we're gonna be a little more than, we're gonna be 12 mLs, all right? Two times six, 12 mLs, okay? Also another tip, mLs and cc, sometimes that's how it's listed, those are the same thing, okay? So don't get confused there, all right? So you're just gonna read the label and do what it says, but you've gotta be able to tell how much your animal weighs, so sometimes um, there's tapes that can go around the abdomen of the animal that can tell you how much it weighs. Um, some shoots have scales on them, okay? So you need to be aware of that and how, much, how big they are versus how much they weigh, okay? All right, so then it talks about if there's a concern for the, for the uh, drug, it gives you some warnings down here. It's a, this one actually talks about lactating animals, okay? Most of ours have something called a withdrawal time. Let me know what that means. Lily? The time the medicine is like still trying to assist them and it finds what to do if they eat the meat or they drink the milk. That's right. So if it has a withdrawal time of 10 days, then you have to give that, you have to administer that medication prior to 10 days of that animal being harvested for meat consumption. Okay? So that means if it says 10 days, that means you have to be done with that drug before you go to the fair. Okay? Just to be safe. You don't know when that animal is actually going to be killed. So just to be safe, give it that 10 days or whatever it says to do, okay? All right, so that's that's basically the, the medication label. Maybe it'll stay. Okay, so when you guys are in the pins, one of the things that you can do is help mix the medications, okay? All right, so this one has two vials. This is a modified live virus, okay? Which is what a lot of producers use. Um, it's, it's very effective, okay? So this is a dry powder. Can you guys see that, that it's a dry substance in there? Okay, and this one, that's not the right one. This one has the water, it's a sterile, um, it's not water, sterile um, liquid in there, okay? So you have to mix these two together, all right? So what you're gonna do is you have a transfer needle, okay? And you're gonna mix them together. You have to do it at the same, or one, one before the other, okay? Now this box also has a warning. It says store between 35 and 45 degrees. Is it 45 degrees out here? No, it's hot, right? Okay, it's probably like in the 90s right now. Okay, so this needs to be stored in a cooler. All right, so or the refrigerator if you have one on site. Um, once you mix this medication, it's only good for an hour. Okay, because that's a live virus. It will die after that point. If this ends up frozen, it's also dead at that point, okay? So make sure that it's not getting frozen in storage. Oh, I did injection size. Okay, all right, so we're gonna talk about where this shot goes. We talked about that, in fact, this one is intermuscular, okay? So that means that it does go somewhere deep in the muscle, okay? But most of ours are vaccines and they're subcutaneous. Does anybody know where subcutaneous shots go? Lily? Pick up the skin, it's like in their neck. In the neck. Why is it in the neck? Does anybody know? Taylor? The neck is like, it has more skin and it is better to put it in there. It is better to put it in there, okay? It does have more skin, so it's easier to pick it up and then insert the needle under the skin. But also because this quality of meat is not as good as the rest of the body, okay? So back here is like your Arby's roast beef, and that's really valuable, okay? So we don't want any puncture wounds back here in this muscle. So we can put it right up under the neck, 
and, and that, that meat quality is just not as good, so it's okay if it gets a little damaged. But we don't want to damage it, okay? That's definitely not the goal because then that's money out of your pocket. Um, another place you could give them is right up under the underarm here, but it's really, it's not a really a normal place to do it unless you run out of room up here. Because if you have multiple shots, they should be three inches apart, okay? So three fingertips apart, okay? Lindsay, That's take it away. I forgot to introduce the superstar of our show, Austin Bateman, back here in the back. He's running the squeeze shoot for us. He brought all these cows up here so that y'all could learn today. He works here at the University of Florida on a range cattle research and education center. He manages the cow herd and he's an awesome cowboy and we're very grateful to have him. And he's gonna um, get us a cow in the shoot in a few minutes and I'm gonna ask for two volunteers to come up and do something that I think you both right? Okay, come on, come on. So I think that this is something that, that youth can do in the cow pens or even on your show heifers. You can bleed your show heifers and determine pregnancy. We well, can use that blood to um, do disease, disease diagnosis yeah. also. The first thing we have to do is this test tube is gonna be linked to that cow. So how, it doesn't have anything on there that specifies it's a black cow with some white on her or whatever. How do we identify her? Grayson and Rylan, how do you think we should identify her? She got a brand? She should. Go, let's go look around. Let's go see how we can identify her. Also, be very careful. What's she got? She has a cat Yes, she does. Which one do you want to use? Just pick one. Okay, come on. Well, I think we won't do that anymore. Okay. So you need to write the numbers or the letter A18 or tag number on that tube. We do that before we tail bleed because what's going to get on that tube? Blood, manure, all kinds of stuff. And then what's, we can't write on it any longer. And so um, the, the lab can wipe that off and still see that we, uh, they're testing A18. We're gonna get a needle out because this needle and this test tube is for this cow. We cannot use this for another cow once we have her blood in it. We cannot use this for another cow once this has her blood on it because it's contaminated then, right? And it could affect the results, especially if it's a pregnancy diagnosis or even a disease. This is a double-sided needle. We'll pull this out. And you have to be very careful when you're handling these. And then I pull this rubber thing off so these kids can see when we've hit the vein. Okay, you hold the, who, uh, Rylan, you wanna hold the test tube? We're gonna go up here. And when you bleed a cow, it's different. Or when you, when you bleed the tail, it's different than whenever you bleed a jugular vein in a human or in a horse, for example, where you kind of stay along the neck and you go uh, like at a 45 degree angle into the jugular. We don't do that for a cow. We go 90 degrees perpendicular to the tail. There's a groove right in the center of the tail and you can run your th thumb along there. You can do it, Bryce, Bryson. Run your hand along here. Run your hand along here and feel for that groove right along. Here. See where my fingers are? You feel like there's like a canal right there or a ditch? That's where we're gonna stick this needle. And then who has the test tube? Brayson, you got it? Once I draw blood, you're gonna tell me you've hit blood because you're gonna see it coming out, okay? And then that's when we stick this in. This is a vacuum tube. It has a red top. What is red the color of? Blood. Blood. That's easy for you to remember. You always have to know what color the top of your test tube is for whatever test you're doing. For pregnancy diagnosis, it's very important that we use a red top tube because there's nothing in the bottom of this tube to change the quality of the blood. But different colors have different materials in the bottom um, for different purposes like anti-clotting or different things. Okay, you continue to hold that. I'm gonna draw some blood. You're gonna tell me when we hit the vein and then you're gonna stick it up there, okay? Can you reach? Okay. It's okay if you can. I think you can. Yeah. <laughs> Up here. Nope, nope, 
you leave it on. This is a vacuum sealed tube. So we put it in, and it sucks the mud out into two mils, and that's just like two fingers. So you can put this up because that's part of safety. sometimes it works that way okay so this is two cc's or two mils and it's two fingers from the bottom the lab needs at least two cc's to be able to do the test so you take this very carefully over to the test tube rack and then go ahead you could put it in there wherever hole you want I want you to use this little set of pliers these things cost like 15 bucks they fit in your pocket they're a great tool to have you can use them for splinters pinch somebody's face or mechanic and whatever you need to do. Do you want to pull the needle off? And then we're going to put it in a what? What are we going to do with the needle? Grab the yellow part. There you go. Now there's two sides. Okay, thank you. We can't just put the needles in the regular trash. Where do they have to go? have a sharps container. This is a bona fide official sharps container. Well, container probably has a label on it. Um, it's a label for the cow pins. Or if you're working in a set of pins that doesn't have a sh or at the show scenario where you only have one show steer or one show heifer or one dairy animal, then you would just put it in your water bottle here. Now I labeled this as trash so that in case there's a little bit of water in there and you're thirsting to death, you don't drink out of this. But this has its own trash label. It says purified water, which is trash. It's disgusting water. You can't even clean out your medicine tubes with this because it's trash. But I did put a T on the top. Purified water has chlorine and other additives in it so that it can um, be considered purified. I don't drink this. I don't recommend you drink it. Um, where's my, oh, so in the end, whenever the kids are getting ready to help their parents get back in the truck or you're finishing up with your show steer stuff, we can start, y'all can start cleaning up. Um, some things that you can do is clean the medicine hoses or the medicine guns. And here is the true star of the show for water. It's spring water. It doesn't have anything else added in it but pure goodness, hydrogen and oxygen. Don't use purified water to clean this out or you will um, jeopardize the quality of your antibiotic and your vaccine because there's chlorine in there and other minerals that can build up in these hoses. Don't use it in here. Don't use soap and water. Don't use uh, chlorine or bleach or anything like that. Just good old spring water is all you have to use. Okay, let's get another volunteer to clean out the gun. You haven't volunteered yet. Okay, so we're gonna put this on here. Now there's a needle hooked to the other side. Okay, so you need to pull your needle off. Y'all need to scoot back a little bit, otherwise I feel like he's gonna have some fun with this and scorch you. Okay, and then you hold it like a gun, you know, like you're gonna shoot something. It's gonna shoot it right there. Okay, and then we hold this up high, shoot, start cleaning out this hose and that gun, get all that medicine cleaned out of there. You just wanna do it a couple times. There you go. Okay, you keep going. We're gonna hold this up high, make sure we get all the water out and get that gun nice and clean. Luckily, you can see through that gun. This is all stuff that y'all can do, right? There's a lot of stuff in the cow pens that the little ones can't do, but this is all stuff you can help with and make sure that it's staying. Okay, that's good. You're, you're a great gun cleaner. Thank you so much. And you can have a kick cat if you would like. Oh, and you kept the lid perfect. So at the end of this, we would also remove this with our little pliers, put this where? in our sharps container which is either this or your water bottle that you have the lid for and then we just store this so that that hose can continue to drain out the water and be dry for the next working um i think that's everything oh i did have one more thing to show y'all if y'all are doing castrations um, you can use a tagging knife or a pocket knife or whatever you're castrating with, but you want to clean whatever blade you're using between each animal. And we have a chlorhexidine solution. You'll just pour this directly into the bucket, dip your knife, 
your tagging knife or your, um, or your castration knife or your pocket knife in here and pull it out and we'll keep on working. And then at the end, same thing, clean it off really good. And this solution is a disinfectant. So it's gonna, what gets on your tagging knife whenever you're castrating or on your castration knife? Blood. Blood, vas deferens tubes at the tip of the testicles. What else? Who's ever castrated before? We're at the end of the cow that the poop comes out. So sometimes poop gets on this knife and you want it to be clean because I don't know how many of you have um, went to the doctor or maybe you have siblings. If you go to the doctor to get a medical procedure, you certainly don't want someone's poop on the medical um, equipment that they're gonna be using, right? Why not? Because then it will be way too disgusting and plus you could spread germs. Way too disgusting. That's the most scientific reason I've ever heard, Hannah. Yes, it would be way too disgusting and it could spread germs. So we just clean it off in this solution. It's also good to stick your hands in there every now and then if you're castrating a bunch of them. Your hands got dirty. Well, that happens sometimes, but I'm going to wash them before I eat, most likely. Not at all. Depends on how hungry I am. Okay. See, my fingers look clean. No, just one hand.